You're in tune to Chicago's most popular college music radio station, 89.3 is WKKC. This is Focus Talk, the thought-provoking, solution-oriented talk show daring to make a difference in our communities. We're talking on a regular basis because the answers really matter. What are we talking about? Well, we're talking about politics, religion, personal development, education, history, music, and then from time to time, we are spotlighting positive people who are doing positive things right here in the Inglewood community, throughout the Chicagoland area, as well as the entire United States. I'm your host, Dennis Snipe. Joining me in the studio today is the king of the misfus. What up? Whoa. What up, man? How are you, sir? Oh, man, I'm having... Hey, listen, it's, it's a great day. I'm alive, I'm breathing, and I'm enjoying every moment. Indeed, indeed. We're better We're better than most because some don't have that opportunity, that privilege. That's right. To That's be on, on this side. So I'm grateful, and you are grateful as well. Yes, I am, and I, I said off mic that I am extremely excited that you're happy that you're here, and I'm happy that you're here yeah. because I've been hearing a, a lot about you, yeah. and uh, it's an honor to have you in the studio. It's a privilege to be here, man. Like I tell everybody, I, I take each and every moment of my life and I make something of it. You know? Tell me a little about a little bit about yourself. Um, Who I'm, was Quo? Uh, Quo, well, I'm actually from, uh, first of all, I'm a man. I'm a black man. Um, I am originally from the west side of Chicago. Okay. Uh, I'm a Level Next Music recording artist. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm the owner of Flow Entertainment. Uh, it's an a interactive DJ company. I specialize in private events like bar mitzvahs, bar and bar mitzvahs, <laughs> corporate weddings, sweet sixteens, anniversaries, and we do we do a lot of a lot of uh, high end parties, a lot of private high end parties. I'm also the founder of the Quo Hope Foundation, which is a 501c3 organization here in Chicago. Okay. Now, now let, let's back. unpack that and take it step by step. First of all, you are a recording artist. Yes, sir. Next, next level? Level Next Music. Level Next Music. Level okay. Next Music. Okay. Now, unpack artist. that for me. What is Level Next Music? Level Next Music is uh, a recording. Uh, it's 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 a, it's a few things. Uh, uh, DPMG is Dupe Production Music Group, and Level Next Music is under that umbrella. Dupe Productions is owned by uh, DPMG. Dupe Productions is owned by Ivan Dupe. He's a music producer. Uh, friend mentor uh he's a writer producer uh we have a production team with uh dj genre taylor mallory richard patterson who's a well-known bass player um and we're a production team ivan decided to form a, a record label a artist development which eventually turned into a record label to uh sign groups and sign artists that are doing something positive with their music doing something positive with their art giving us the real life you know, trying to inspire others. You know, so the the label is, uh, it's 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 one of those places where you can go and really be um, a positive artist. Where you can go and whether you're talking about your personal experiences in your life, mm -hmm. whether you're talking about how bad you used to be and how good you are now. You know, and how you're trying to take things to another level in your life. So, which which it's it's a it's a family. It's a team. It's a team of people who came together for one purpose and that's to really shine with our music it's really to shine with the blessings that god have given us so you know that's what it is so quote well, how did you get started in the music side oh it started when i was young man it started when i was man like eight you know my mother my mother who i love dearly my mom is is everything to me um she was in a singing group she was in the singing group, a disco group called Coffee. And they had some pretty, pretty big disco songs out. <laughs> and um, that's how it started. You know, just going to her rehearsals and, and going to the YMC and watching them rehearse and going to their pra different practice places to uh, watch them rehearse. And I always had a love for music. You know, I was watching musicals like, you know, like The Wiz. I love Michael Jackson. You know, everybody, I don't care who you is. You know what I'm saying? From the hardest <laughs> rapper to whatever. You, you love you, Michael you Jackson. You love Michael Jackson. You know what I'm saying? So I, I watch, you know, I, I love Michael Jackson. It started. It started when I was young, man. Like just music in general, just it, the way it made me feel. It always made me feel, you know, free from, you know, what the circumstances were. Now, was your dad musically inclined as well? Uh, my father was in the singing group. Um, it was called. They were called the Steelers. Uh, he was in the singing group with like his brothers. But my father really was never in my life. You know, just to be honest. Mm. You know, he, he was never a part of my life. And and 
you know, me growing up and raising me and, and, and helping me become a man. He wasn't in my life, you know. Uh, he passed away uh, about 10 years ago or so. Uh, but I still loved him, still my father, but he just wasn't in my life. Okay. As a Rolling Stone, you know. Yeah, but you acquired his his musical ability. Of course, I, I think so. I think it was passed through, through, you know. Okay. To me and my brother, you know, because my brother's one of my um, my brother works with me as well, and he's a he's a DJ, pretty good DJ and stuff. So, yeah. So when did you when did you figure out that this was something that you really liked? that you really wanted to pursue and oh, do something with. I was, I remember, you know, like I was, um, I was in seventh grade and I, I was the scarecrow in the whiz <laughs> for the play at the school. We had to do like a say no to drugs kind of thing. And um, I was the scarecrow and, and, and we had to be creative and come up with a way to incorporate say no to drugs. That was like the campaign. Okay. <laughs> and so, um, we did that I, as the scarecrow. I had to dance, you know. I love dancing and stuff, so I was able to do it. And 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 since then, I was like, man, being up on stage and people, you know, clapping for you because you're dancing or do, and doing a good job. That was like everything to me, you know. So it's like I'm doing it. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. You know? Okay. All right. And so then you you progressed and and went to the next stage as far as entertainment, music, and so on and well, so forth. Well, um, you know, I'm from the west side of Chicago, man. I'm um, I was born in um, Henry Horner, and later moved, you know, to K Town, and then West West Garfield Park area, you know, Hamlin, and Fulton, uh, Avery's and Lake Street. And at that point, um, you know, as time time passed. You know, I do the, you know, some bad decisions. I turned to the streets, you know, 16 years old out there, just, you know, doing what I thought I needed to do to have a new pair of shoes. You know, I had one pair of shoes for the whole year. So I was really out in the streets. You know, I turned to the street life, you know, I didn't have that, that positive uh, black male role model in my life. So I turned to what most, most kids my age did. You know, I turned to the streets. I turned to, you know, looking for that love outside of the home. You know, my mama, she gave me all the love she can give me, but she's still not a man, you know. So I'm looking for that, that male figure. You know, who, who's that male figure in my life when I really didn't have that? You know, I had uncles and stuff, but they were, you know, close to my age, you know. My mother was the oldest out of 11 siblings, so her brothers, you know, some of her brothers were, you know, closer to our age, you know, like like she had us at a young age. And um, I turned to the streets, man. I, I, I turned to the guys that showed me love and that protected me, and I felt that, you know, helped me make money. They, they showed me how to how to maneuver in the streets. My boy Chief, may he rest in peace, and, and guys like Al and, and, and Vess and uh, just a whole bunch of guys that I got, got love for from that from that area. The Rags family, just a lot of people that showed me love and, 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 and care for me, you know. And and so this is where you you learned your basics. You cut your teeth out in the streets, hanging out. Yeah. And uh, um, basically went from the streets to the next level. Uh, yeah, it's something like level? the le yeah. It went. It, it, it was something like that. You know, I, I had to, you know, get get. I had to learn a lot. I had to mm -hmm. learn a lot while I was out there. I learned a lot. You know how to sell drugs. You know, I I learned how to do everything. You know, that it, that came with that. You know, like. How to make money was my whole thing, you know. Eventually got kicked out of high school for, um, you know, not attending because I was out selling drugs. Okay. So I wound up getting kicked out. You know, I, the reason why I even went to the streets was because I didn't have nothing. You know, I felt like I didn't have anything. You know, I had love. My mother gave us a lot of love, but I felt like I didn't have much. So I did what I had to do, what for, had to do. for a few years. And, and as I'm doing that, I'm, I'm, I'm loving music. You know, I'm, I'm still loving music. Music was still a part of what I, you know, what I love. So I hooked up with my, my older brother and, and we formed a group called In Disguise. And it was like, yo, we got this group now. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm you know, I'm like, we can do this. You know, like I like writing songs. I was the youngest. So they were looking at me like, what this boy going to know about writing? You know what I mean? Like, what what is he going to? You know, I added to their dance and they were like a dancing group, basically. And, and I added to. Uh, some music that they had They created this music And was just dancing to it And I was like yo I took it And put some words to it So you had some skills As far as rapping Yeah at the time Yeah yeah You know you like When you're young You're thinking like Oh everything you write Is golden you know So I'm, <laughs> I'm with them And I just started Really writing and start really liking music while i was in the streets i'm like yo i still like music so we perform and now we're getting to do the park this the different park districts and the different competitions and we going around and we dancing and rapping and singing doing that whole thing and and my love for it just grew stronger 
You know, it started it started just growing so stronger. And and the guys from the neighborhood, the OGs from the neighborhood, they was like the old heads was like, yo, you got a talent. You got something special. Y'all got something. And and they started, you know, my boy Chief started investing, my boy Vest, you know, they started investing like little money in our outfits and things like that, you know, in our fits. So it was it was just really uh it was just a really great experience, you know. So as that continued to go, we started opening up for different artists and we started performing more and my love for music just started growing. So know? Q, was there anything that you that after you look back that you learned in the streets that you utilize now in your business? Yes, um, loyalty. Mm. Loyalty was something that I learned being on Lake and Avers, H and F, Hamlin and Fulton. You know, it was loyalty, man. Like you were, you were loyal to those guys. Those guys were loyal to you because all they really wanted was for you to have something. It wasn't to look cute. You know what I'm saying? We weren't doing it to look cute. It was so you could have something. So you can have something in life. You know, so loyalty was one of the things that I took, you know, and doing exactly what you say you're going to do, you know, because I wasn't somebody that was drinking and getting high. That wasn't my that wasn't my kick. My kick was how can I give my mama some money? How can I, you know, buy some new clothes and buy some new shoes? You know, so I have to wear the, whole, the same shoes. So it's about a work ethic, really, is what I built. I built a work ethic to this day. I don't go to bed until four or five in the morning. And I know it's because of how I was back then, but that really helps me a lot because I was able to, uh, like I'm able now, like staying up late and, and making sure the job gets done. Like when it comes to my businesses and when it comes to scheduling dancers and DJs and things like that, I still do it myself because I, 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 I know it's gonna get done. I know it's gonna be perfect. You know? Do you think that's the issue now that, uh, and, and we're gonna come back back to this, that a lot of the young people who are how can I say maybe wilding out now? Yeah. Don't have that center uh, basis of loyalty. They don't think that there's something outside of where they are and what they're doing presently. Well, well, a lot of that is, you know, if you don't get out the neighborhood, if you don't get out of your eight block, four block, eight block radius, and you don't get to see different opportunities, and you don't get to see how things work outside of your four, eight block radius, how are you going to know that? Who's teaching you that? If, if most of most of, a lot of black men are in jail, a lot of black in de dead are in jail or just not there, just dead be dads. That's just the truth. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have that, someone to show you that, like no one showed me about a, you know, no one taught me how to have a bank account. No one showed me, you know, how to take care of my daughter. I had a baby at 16. No one showed me that. No one told me you got to be married before you have kids. Nobody, nobody ever showed me that. So when I, when I, when I think of like the, the new generation now and what they going through, man, they, 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 no one taught them. The people say, well, you know right from wrong. Of course you do. Everybody knows right from wrong. They do. Every, I think everybody knows right from wrong. Come on, we, we, we learn that at a young age, right? We learn right from wrong. Mm -hmm. But when you in certain circumstances, you turn a blind eye to right and wrong. Sometimes you just go for whatever. If when you hungry, when you feel like you don't have nothing, when you feel like my, nobody loves me, nobody care about me, you just go for whatever it is you got to go for to get to that next place in life. Because something that I always did after I, you know, stopped selling drugs, I I had to make a decision because my the man I loved, the man that I cared about, the man that cared about me, the man I looked up to, he was murdered. He was shot quite a few times in the face and murdered. And that hurt me to this day, every time I talk about it. That was the person that showed me, talked to me about girls, talked to me about how, you know, you do certain things, how to maneuver, be the best person you can be. He taught me all those things, even though you may have looked at him and said, oh, he's just a drug dealer, oh, they just drug dealer. No, that was somebody that gave me love in, in, a, in, a, in a place where it was horrible, where living conditions wasn't right, where opportunity was slim to none. So that person, those guys that taught me that, gave me that love and taught, gave me foundation to who I am, I love them and I don't care what anybody think. I know we was doing wrong now. I know it was wrong and I know it affected the community. That's why things are the way they are right now because of what I did and so many other guys did back in the day. Hmm. It messed up their, their future. So is it 
as easy as you just said, just by someone taking the time to spend with a young man, teaching him and letting him know that he's loved, showing him affection, showing him the things that he may have missed along the way to be able to turn around the situation where we are? I wouldn't say it's easy. There's okay. nothing in life easy. Getting here today was not easy to get to come do this interview because I had traffic all the way from downtown all the way here and I had to sit in that traffic. Nothing in life is easy and that's the thing we got to teach. We got to teach it's not going to be easy. It's going to take some work. It's going to like my boy Ivan like to say, he says heart work, not hard work, heart work. And it's gonna take that in order to get the success you're looking to get. So all the all the the youth that's sitting there, all the all the kids that are out here, you know, you know, involved in violence or whatever the things may be, they gotta they have to listen as well. It's it's a, they have to take responsibility, and they gotta listen. And anybody that's doing it and you're successful, whether you're a basketball player, an actor, somebody famous, somebody with some type of something that can inspire these kids, you can't give up on them. You gotta keep trying to reach them and the way you do that you got to spend time you can't just talk about it you can't just be like oh yeah i love going to visit the kids you know on the south side of ningle i love going out west you can't just say that you got to go you got to go and you got to listen you may not agree with what the kids are saying and what they feel in the day you may not you may not agree with it but you still got to listen and let them know you can trust me i understand i too used to be 15 i too used to be 18 you, we got to sit down and we got to listen because they're going through something. There's a lot of emotional issues there. There's a lot of issues of my father is not in my life. He don't. He dead or he in jail. He don't care about me. Nobody cares about me. I have nothing. And if they are in that state of mind, we got to take the time to listen because that's the first step to listen. Dude, they got dreams. Everybody got dreams. Everybody dream big. Everybody. And those dreams turn into hope. You feed, you feed the dreams as they get older. It turns into hope, eager expectations of what's not seen. It inspires them, so we gotta feed their hope. Even if you got somebody that's in the gang and he walking around with, 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 with hammers, you know what I mean, he walking around with guns, and, and you trying to reach him, you gotta listen to him, and you gotta try to let him know, you don't have to do it. I know you think you gotta do this, but you don't have to. Now, if he listens, man, that's great. He hears you. But if he listens, really listens, you can probably make a difference in his life. But if he don't hear you, if he takes that hard road and he just decides he don't want to listen, he or she, and he decides he don't want to listen, all you can do is pray for him, man, and continue to be, try to be a positive influence in their life with your actions. Well, we're going to take a break. And on the other side of the break, we're going to come back and talk about the fork in the road or the changing point for you yes how did that happen and how did you become the incredible uh entrepreneur businessman father that you are now yes sir I'm all right ready. you're in it. tune to focus talk we'll be right back right after this you're watching focus talk tv with your host dennis knight 